So, hello and uh, thanks for your invitation. So I will, uh, I will talk English because uh, I, I, li I know that Pierre de Moron this morning talks in French, so already French is done. <laughs> Let's go with, with, with English, but we are still in the euro. <laughs> um, yeah, it's nice to be back in uh, Pamplona, because I remember, perhaps it was 20 years ago, but I came here for many San Fermins. And each time I came back, I was so tired. Six months to recover, probably. <laughs> but I am really happy to be, to be here in Pamplona for, to explain our project. I think we will, I will show the project we are doing. They, I think they talk very precisely uh, to precise points and the points we are interested in. So it's about change of climate, which is, I think, something interesting for all the time we were interested on the question of climate, perhaps because my father is a meteorologist, and uh, I think the the weather all around the world can be also approached in a very small scale through, through a house or from one window to another window. It's about also strategies of the essential. So I think the two, the two parts are interesting strategies uh, because the situation is more and more complex the cities are more and more complex, interesting, different, diverse. We know everything about all the cities in the world, so the local and the global are in the same time in our mind. The problems, the questions are difficult. We are totally surrounded by topics, questions, big big questions, sustainability, affordability, smart city, ecology, etc. And all of this is around us. Questions are difficult, so we have to reconsider the questions. This complexity is a chance for architects. And this is why we need strategies. Strategies are how to do, precisely how to do in this jungle of norms, regulations, questions, etc., forms, materials, and uh, it's, we really need to find strategy. But strategy, I think it's important to, be, to find elegant strategy, nice strategy, gentle strat strat strategies. And, uh, Essential, so strategies of the essential, the essential. What is essential? I could say poetry is essential. It means lightness, delicacy, generosity, kindness, beauty are essential. I really like poems. It's strange how a poem is totally related with the questions we have to do in architecture. Very often, a minimum of words to say a maximum of sense. And it is precisely this related with our questions. Minimum for maximum. What is essential? Just few words, very well arranged in a sentence, makes a poem. Could be the same for architecture. So, 
for me, because sometimes I am a bit lost in all these situations and I don't see very clearly the strategies, I try to come back to very simple things, very simple facts, which are, when I was in Africa, I remember planting some branches in the sand with some people of the villages, bending them using an oil barrel to reach them on top and to light them all together. And then starting to surround them with straw carpet with this quite open in order for the wind to go through. And to finish this circle around this straw hut. And then to place another straw, another kind of straw on the roof, which is much more thin because few days where it is raining, it is important that the drops of water can fall along the roof and not go directly inside. So, in this climate, it is 40, 45, 50 degrees, but in the night, it is still 30 or 35. But just here, the fresh air is going through the wall, and you are protected, and you are under the shadow. It's comfortable. So I remember this first house, the straw hut in the middle with a door, six meter perhaps of diameter, then a fence around, and nine branches fixed also in the sand, supporting a roof just to create shadow, a sort of living room open to the landscape. I come back very often to my first villa. She was very beautiful, I, the most beautiful I have built. And it is related with another minimum elements situation. Very often in the office, we, 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 we look precisely in the work of Miss as a reference a sort of lightness, uh, relations between inside and outside. The plants of Mies are fantastic. It is always a reference when you have to make dwellings, housings. It's not only one tower, it's also to see how you can place two towers all together. One tower is easy, but two towers all together, this is much more difficult. And Plants are fantastic. So, coming back to very simple things for me, it's also to, to have in mind these references. And later, case to the house program. Today we are talking about affordable housing, affordable city. This was a social housing program in the 50s. It was done with 10 or 12 very small steel posts, corrugated roof on top, and then sliding transparent doors all around. You take all of these components, each by each, and you try to see how much they cost. It's still today a very, very, very inexpensive villa. It is a social housing program, but it has provided the most beautiful villa on the west coast. Pierre Koenig. Nearly the minimum. And this relation inside, outside, with a swimming pool. Coming back to simple things, it's also to come back to Maison Domino. So it is very simple things, how to build floors. What is important, it is built to build floors, grounds. So you need some columns, beams, floors, and then one stair to link the different levels. Especially in the city when you have to place several flats on top of each other. So a frame system that you can find sometimes on this 
roads in Albania because people are doing that instinctively. <coughs> Three levels that they will occupy when they want to occupy. So this one is starts by the top, but sometimes they start by the ground floor, or sometimes by the middle, or sometimes they leave the garden on top, or sometimes they make a shop on the ground floor. A sort of maison domino. If we multiply my millions, we could say it is the Polikatoika in Athens. Simple frame system in order to create space. Or this project by Frayotto in Tierkarten in the 87 in, uh, in Berlin. Frayotto that works mainly for making envelopes. This project, not so known, he was just making exactly the contrary, platforms. Three buildings with platforms at seven meters from each other, from the ground to the next one and then the next one and the stair linking them through the, through the forest and through the trees of Tempelhof without cutting any of them. A very simple shim, 14 meters high, something like 500 or 600 square meters for the first level and 300 for the last one. And then they start to work with the inhabitants or some other architects in order to see how they can fill these platforms. You see Fayoto here. And they define the maximum volume they could get on top of each of these platforms. And then they start to build. And they start to build on top with this family because the family below was not ready. And they built that inside Berlin. Instead to ask the city to make very long routes, very long streets with plenty of plots and to make pavilions in the middle of uh, these plots, here the city could manage building platforms and to propose the people to build their own house on top of each of these platforms with still a garden and some empty space. And you have people coming from Hamburg, from Berlin, from different cities, coming with their own way of building. And today, it's a fantastic place to live. So simple things means building floors and frames to have a simple structure. I could add also sliding doors, because sometimes it's about modernity, but it is also so traditional. For, for example, we are really interested by this traditional Japanese house. Sliding partitions, sliding panels, and frame system. It's traditional, but it is incredibly modern. And then, floors plus climate should make a house. And climate, it is not the climate that the regulations want to establish. It is a climate which considers that the climate outside is most of the time interesting and nice. So we have just to adapt it, to control it, to filter it. And that we can take in this occasion a very small movement of wind as a very comfortable situation. We can have a situation for each day. We can work with balconies and terraces on the sun, sunny facade. We can work with cross ventilation. It is interesting to see that, for example, in the northern cities, in Sweden or in Norway, in Denmark, very often, the facades are very transparent, large and transparent, because people try to make a maximum of sun coming inside. And I remember some buildings in, uh, in Spain, in Barcelona or in Madrid, not the recent buildings, but the buildings of the 70s or 60s. You have very large balconies, and the, the filter, the screen, 
covers all the balconies to make shadow between the outside of the facade and the first window. And there, people just manage to have some plants, to have some humidity, and it creates good conditions. So it's very simple things. The gardens in Granada, I think they are famous for the way how very naturally you make a nice, interesting climate. So it's not a climate, a standardized climate. It is something which has to deal with each day it's different, each night it is different, and it is a cycle of day and night. During the night you need to protect a little, but the day after you open again your winter garden or your glass facade in order to leave the calories coming in, to storage a little inside the structure and to give back this temperature during a few hours. And this is the system, seasonal systems, working with simple, very simple elements. Panels, transparent panels for winter gardens, curtains to filter the sun, normal sliding doors to have between the intermediate and the standard climate, and then bigger curtains in order to, during the night, to keep the heat inside. So it's very simple systems because what is important it is that the inhabitant defines himself precisely how he wants to live. So it's not a comfort that is defined by a company or by a regulation, it is a comfort that is defined by your research of your own pleasure. And these own pleasure are the conditions of the sustainability, of energy savings. Because I don't know so many people that are totally crazy about how they want to live in. So, making rules and working with the climate between. That's all. It should be enough for housing. Inhabiting, freedom, comfort, generosity of space, pleasure and luxury for all. This is a fantastic challenge for architects. To say that you could make palaces and luxurious spaces for all people. We are in a democracy, so we should establish as architects these qualities for everybody. And it is not a problem of budget. We have just the possibility to invent in order to find a way to do that very economically. Luxury doesn't mean necessary golden uh, elements. Luxury, it means light, space, good air inside, place for living, place for running, place for jumping, place for liberty, place for freedom. I think it is this which means luxury. So this challenge of housing is particularly interesting, but it is not, non not only flats we are talking about. Housing, inhabiting, it is everywhere. We inhabit this room, we inhabit the plaza, after this building, we inhabit Pamplona, we inhabit the streets, we inhabit a library, we inhabit a museum. We are the inhabitants everywhere. So it means that we consider the space from inside. We are inside the space, inside this room, inside our bedroom, inside our living room, or inside the street, inside the library, or on top of the bench under the tree, inside the space. And we try to conceive our buildings, or like that. We, are, we try to be inside. And if you are inside, it changes everything about the perception of space. We think about, about building double, two times more. So we start 20 years ago with this house that was two or three times bigger than the standard house for exactly the same price. It was just to say that double space affords to have the normal space plus another volume which has exactly the same dimension as the normal one. The first one is programmed because you have three, two bedrooms, a living room, a garage, a bathroom, a kitchen, and the other one is unprogrammed. So you have always this 
game between the two, the programmed and unprogrammed that combine together and that are making plenty, plenty, plenty of different situations. Building double means building doubles in the same cost as a normal project. Inhabiting beyond the functional conveys pleasure, generosity, the freedom to occupy a space. Giving space. Space for living must be generous, comfortable, adaptable, flexible, luxurious, affordable. Dwellings must offer freedoms of usage to generate possibilities for evolution, for interpretation and appropriation. In general, the standards of housing are too small, too restricting. The principle of standard minimum for the living space is wrong. We think we have to offer as much extra space as programmed space to promote relationships within spaces, to bring about pleasure, pleasurable situations. This extra space is an undefined space, free for use, added to the traditional one. Every dwelling must have a privative outside space as a balcony, a terrace, a winter garden, to give the possibility of living outside, of having a garden like in a single house. It is necessary to create living spaces much more generous, as large as possible, to multiply the space for uses and appropriation. So it means a dwelling should have the same facilities as a villa. Instead of this on the left, you try to have what I propose on the right. Additional provide spaces, winter gardens, terraces, balconies, unprogrammed space, 50% minimum of habitable surface. A dwelling, dwelling must offer the inhabitant opportunities to move around go out by a window, come back by another window, turn around the rooms, go from your bedroom and go back to your living room, join the corridor, turn around and not be blocked as a traditional apartment, with large openings to the outside, facility of moving. Frame system, beam columns, constructive system are flexible and economic. So instead of this kind of construction on the left, this proposition on the right with just few columns and additional space in order to build more, with less materials, with less energy. A different contact with the climate. Instead of an envelope that is extremely insulated with big thickness of foam, we think of an intermediate space at a temperate temperature. Passive energy system that will allow energy savings and will create extra space. So it means building larger, twice more, building double, with the same cost as a standard dwelling to be affordable for everyone. Building double to create other possibilities, other freedoms, new ways of inhabiting, to fully inhabit, to loosen norms, decompress space and allow this freedom of users, to transform and enlarge what exists instead of demolishing it, to offer twice more space to each person, necessary and essential condition to any project of increasing the density, living like in a villa. A dwelling inside the city should have the same facility as a villa. So we try to develop these houses with gardens. And then the idea of luxury is therefore redefined in terms of generosity, 
freedom of use and pleasure. In Mulhouse, for this social housing project, what was essential? When we say to the clients that we would like to make the, each flat two times or more bigger than the standard flat, he says that she should be exactly at the same cost as the standard flat. And we say, okay, but if we do that, can we make flats two times or more bigger than the standards? He says, but then the problem will be that I will have to rent them higher because they are bigger. And we say, no, there is a mistake here. Don't you think it could be clear to say I will rent them in function of their cost? And then he said, we can do that, we can try that. So, by the way, we make these flats two times bigger than the standard ones, but they were rented exactly at the same price, for the same cost, with the same charges of energy. So this is, for us, the challenge. And then, when this point is very clear, we can try to invent how to do it. So here it is precisely the juxtaposition, superpositions of two very basic systems. One is just dealing to make on three meters high a sort of table made of columns, beams and floors, like a sort of car park. And on top of this, we go in the fields, in the agricultural systems, to find a professional greenhouse system that are so elaborate in order to control the climate. So one is producing square meters, and the other one is controlling the, the climate of the cubic meters of air inside. In the construction, the two systems on top of each other. And then a partition in order to give for each flat a part of the ground floor, a part of the upper floor, to have a maximum of qualities of facade available that propose totally different kind of flats and totally different possibilities of living inside. Fifteen years later, we work with the same client in Mulhouse for another project in a more, much more dense part of the city. And the client came and said to the mayor of the city, we want to work with Lagaton Vassal, but we want to work with exactly with the same objectives as the first project. So make the flats two times bigger and we will rent them at the cost of a normal standard project. So, new systems, but in a way, the result, the challenge is exactly the same. Prefabricated components, using the less material as possible to build, less time as possible for the construction site, less interfaces, interfaces as possible between the different components, between, for example, structure and envelope, makes at the end a project that can fit with this kind of budget and allows the same capacity inside. You see here the winter garden open or the duplex. under the roof. Build double or also build with. It means that we are always to add to situations. I remember a lecture by this architect, Emilio Ambas, it was in Bordeaux a very long time ago, and he was presenting a project. He was saying, if nature was perfect, we should not have to build houses. In fact, nature is not totally perfect. So what is the minimum we have to, to, uh, we have to add to nature in order to make it possible for inhabitation? So it could be in fantastic places like this, close to Bordeaux, with the sea, Bassin d'Arcachon, 
The question was, is it possible to build there without cutting the trees, without erasing the sand dune? Because precisely the quality of the space was there. So then we say, it's not possible to cut one tree. Not, we don't want to move the sand dune. We have to take care of the roots. We have to take care of the branches. And we have to see how we can adapt a new structure, new foundations, precisely in this situation. Mix the two systems. Add to an existing. In fact, we just had perhaps 20% of the situation because 80% was already there with the landscape, with the situation. And then thinking, oh, it is possible to reflect under the house. So we imagine that the sun reflecting on the sea could come from down to above and to enlight this corrugated aluminum below the house and leave people going under it, walking under it, as they, re they, they think it was before. And the trees inside, outside, just close to the house, just moving with the wind. It is just to add to a situation minimum as we can to add and to establish the situation or what you add and the nature will be in a perfect, in a perfect harmony. Build with in any situations. So it could be a fantastic view on the seaside, it could be also some suburbs around Paris. And to try it to see, to imagine that these kind of situations, La Courneuve s'invente un autre avenir. La Courneuve is inventing a new avenir, a new future, like that. We were totally against this kind of demolitions that are now done in France for more than 10 years. More than 150,000 flats demolished when one million of families are asking for a flat. It's total nonsense. Because we don't know what to do with these slabs. We look at them from very far away. So here again, it's to do with, to add, only to add, never cut one tree, never cut, never take away one square meter of concrete. Especially when the buildings are occupied, plus. So it means that from this situation, we imagine we can push it to this one and even better to this one. Like for this project in northeast of Paris, Tour Bois Le Prêtre, that was totally destroyed, unfortunately, with this new facade in the 80s, adding some asbest and some very bad windows to a situation that was much better before. And that place, building, and the families inside to an hand where it should be demolished normally. Hopefully, they organize a competition in order to try to see this alternative. So, add to the existing new balcony, new winter gardens, three meters deep, new spaces, new extensions, new temperate spaces, plus new bedrooms also, new elevators. And then, with the people inside, with the families inside, just taking all the wishes, the old woman living on top that never asked to go down because she was anxious that the client could take them in another part of the city. A family of 18 people inside one flat. Uh, so, plenty of different situations. Someone on the west wanting to go on the east. It was possible to discuss about all these questions and to see precisely with the transformation how we can be, establish a sort of easy case in which all the movements could be possible in order to transform this situation from that to that. To transform this difficulty from that to that. Or this 
fantastic entrance before with the sun painted on the grid. Do that. Transformation, adding, doing with, with the families, talking with the families, establishing new relations with the families, also all together. And finally, a new image for the building. Or in this case, this typical French suburbs around Saint-Nazaire, where precisely... Yeah, I don't think I see that. Yeah, on the left you see how we can move a bathroom, which is very small, and then place it on the bedroom, and then finding a new place for the bedroom and adding a new winter garden and a new balcony, using the old bathroom for storage at the entrance, and then finding by transformation inside a new situation. That could be applied for all the four flats on the 10 levels of this building of 40 families, but also thinking that in this situation it could be possible to, to work on densification and to the 40 existing buildings to see how it was possible to add 40 new buildings with two new entrances and winter gardens. Just to change the situation from the existing by the winter gardens and the new bedrooms taking place of the, uh, on the two sides and the extensions of the 40 new flats and solutions for the new car park. That makes that finally the building moves to that and to that and to that. Transformation, doing with it's not necessary to demolish. We can find the place, really, at the place where the existing buildings are. No need to make new streets, new shafts, new ducts, new electricity systems. Just close as possible to the, new, to the old flats, you can extend the city. And giving inside nice conditions of space. Or in Bordeaux. Well, Bordeaux is a very low city, three, four levels maximum. But on the horizon, on the skyline, you have this big area, which name is the Grand Parc. All these big slabs inside the city that have been repainted years after years, but with always the same kind of problems, and to a point where the question is, is, should we demolish them or not? You see here the, the brown and yellow paintings on the facade in order to change the life of the inhabitants. And then we operate also the transformation. So 530 flats in three buildings, two big slabs of 15 levels high, and 200 meters long, plus another building of 10 levels high. All the apartments are occupied. We have perhaps 2% of vacancy inside. And, by the way, a new image to the city. Here, the transformation, the addition is only in one direction, because all the flats are looking to this direction southeast. The addition is of four meters deep new winter gardens and balconies. So you see before and after. Before, small windows, extremely small balconies, and the new project. So it's a bit like that. If you take one fragment of each of these slabs, you see these three apartments with one column, vertical column of circulation, stairs and elevator. So we add four meters on one facade, we add a new elevator, and we repair the old elevator. And we give a security uh, situation for the stairs that was not 
safe plus transforming the bathroom and the electricity inside. So we add on the existing situation new modular units that come already with the handrail. They are placed on systems of columns, prefabricated elements, and then successively when the scaffolding, this sort of big and definitive scaffolding is done in front of the building, we can cut the old facade, uh, go to the winter gardens and make new windows at the place. So, the situ starting situation of the existing. You see here this big slab, 200 meters long and 15 levels. Then the first components coming up. So they are 6.4 long and 4 meters deep. We established some connections with uh, the facade just to stabilize because the modular units have their own foundations. Then from this we make the new attach on the level, next level. We place the columns, we fix them, Then you see here the situation of the balcony, as it is. Inside the inhabitant, we place this system to protect from the dust and protect also from the asbest, which has been placed in the old windows and that we have to take away. So this, this sort of sas stays during for uh, four or five hours. Then we cut the old window in order to change it in a big window, big door. We open from one side to the next side. We take away this box and we find the flat inside and we place the new window frame, transparent, and then the client can immediately take advantage of his winter garden. Just immediately placing some plants, furniture, canapé, hamac, with a new air, a new light, a new movement, with a cost which is something like half of a new, new building, a new construction. And precisely a dimension which is much higher than the standard. New elevators on the north facade with transparency. So, it's building with, but it is also do not build, or nearly not, like Palais de Tokyo. It was like this inside, outside, but inside it was totally demolished after a former project that never happens totally, but the inside was totally demolished, waiting for the project, and after that the building was abandoned. And we find it like in this situation. So the budget was extremely low and here also the question it is what we should not do. What is the minimum we should add to this situation in order just to leave the people and the artists being able to come in. So the minimum and the risk precisely it is to do too much leaving the place, opening the windows, opening the doors, finding systems of heating or lightning, systems of to show the art pieces, that's all. So in the first phase for 3 million euro and 10,000 square meters, and the second phase for uh, 13 million euro but 
completing the building up to 30,000 square meters with a big volumes. It is one of the biggest art center now in Europa, just giving this freedom to the artists, to the visitors. Finding the way to explore the deepest part of the system, saying, saying that each square meter should, we should try to make it public. So here the intervention was just to f f place these big stairs in order immediately at the entrance to have the possibility to go 14 meters deep down to the basement, used also for video and art shows. So using the space, delivering maximum of additional spaces of diverse atmosphere or diverse situation for films in the dark or for performance in the light. Minimum to try to do the maximum. Or to do totally not, but I think you talk already a bit about this project. When the commission was clear. It was the embellishment of a plaza in Bordeaux, around Bordeaux, not a famous plaza, but a little one. And we went there and we talked with the people. And uh, there was not so many problems. And we came back to the mairie and we say we have done one project because we were a bit anxious that they could give the project to somebody else. So we say, we have done one project, and the project it is to do nothing. And they say, OK. <laughs> because in fact, the bench were OK. The lamp was OK. The, f the floor was OK to play uh, balls on, on, on it. So. The problem, it was that they don't clean this plaza as the main plaza inside the city. So we asked, can you go each week and not each month? And it works like that. We get our fee. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the inhabitants are happy. It is just to say, we cannot say we should embellish. We should really say, what, is, what means beauty? What is the charm of... Uh, can we really think about what is the charm of a place? And also, it is strange to see all this energy to change the street, to change the pavement, to change the plaza. I see in, in France we want to make new uh, cyclist uh, lines. So for that, because it's ecologic to go in a bike in the city. So then you take away the asphalt. And then you bring some big boats coming from China all around the world with some granite little blocks inside and they, you change this and you place that perhaps 30 or 40 centimeters deep and you make all of this. I like asphalt. <laughs> Building double again, because in fact, inhabiting, it's everywhere. It can be your house, it can be your school. This is the School of Architecture of Nantes. We are happily in the center of the city. What it means for a school of architecture to be in the side of the city. The School of Architecture in a city, it is the biggest office of this city. It is a place where you have all the energy of the students, the works of the students, the, the competence and the, uh, the, the intelligence of the professors, the research, which is in, uh, possible to, to look at, the library, plenty of books. You cannot have another office in the city that has more energy, more uh, value than this. So the School of Architecture should be first a platform of debate, a platform of discussion, a, plat a cultural platform inside the city for the inhabitants to come in to go and see the diploma, to come and to, to assist to some conference or to lectures, to also to welcome some other schools from other cities or some other fields like art schools coming there and taking half of the space to make an exhibition 
and to meet and to discuss with the students of architecture. To give a place where you can make some films for the new Twingo Renault, going on, on top of it, and also to see how the students can participate to this filmmaking. It's a platform. So we try to say, there is no squ one square meter of the plot that we want to leave. We take all the, the two sides of the streets towards this possibility. We want to take all the height as possible. And we want to build on this a very huge and strong and robust platform, starting from the ground. The ground stays the same. The same is the asphalt of the city. The, the, so like the one of the old arbor. And then the first level will be at 9 meters high, and the next one at 16, and the last one at 23. All these f floors have one ton by square meters of resistance, so you can make uh, double uh, some mezzanine inside. And also the roof will also have the same resistance. And because the floors, these floors are like an urban situation for the city, we need a street to go from the street precisely to the first level and then to the second level and finally to the roof. This is a disposal, dis disposal to, of the platform. So we have a very simple grid of 10 by 10 adapted to the, to the land and some places where we just have the stabilization by elevators, stairs and the ramp on the uh, southwest side. The second level, the ramp following and going on and finishing on the roof. So to live, imagine there in the center of the city, a big platform. Instead of a school of architecture, the program was about 9,000 square meters of program for a school of architecture. Here, there was 30,000 square meters of floors all included, inside, outside, just for freedom. And then inside it was possible to build the School of Architecture precisely with this additional system of uh, metal, uh, metal and wood uh, structures for the auditorium, for different levels to take place and to adapt to the platform and to define some places with mezzanine at different levels. And to imagine that inside you could have the normal climate as so a temperate climate to propose the system with the ramp, with the cafe of Van Lissout and the big auditorium that can open outside, the big all to make models, one one, totally open to the street, with possibilities of big models or concerts or dinners, the auditorium that you can open looking to the river in order to have spectacle on both sides. And precisely the space, unprogrammed space, the space that you use when the class is finished and when the students meet again and they can talk about what they learn or something else. Or sometimes where the schools that are invited can have also some studio outside in this kind of space. We've also the transparency and the visibility from one level to another level and then to the city besides. With possibility to dance, to make music, to make nets, to make plenty of other things that will participate to of learning architecture. With the possibility always to being inside, outside, to take the sun, to climb the ramp, to reach the roof, to make a party, or to make a cinema, or a circus. It's about freedom. In Dunkerque, the essential, it was about this building in the middle that was the last volume remaining from the big activity of the harbour of Dunkerque. It was the only left, it was called the cathedral, because in, one, in the mind of the workers, it was a place where they were repairing the big boats. And when there is no more activity, 
immediately the question it is how can we do the memory how can we use the space and immediately it seems that you have to fill the space and in this building of 25 meters large 80 meters long 30 meters high so 2000 square meters on the ground floor immediately it appears that it was a good idea to make a program for a cultural uh, storage and exhibition space, what we call FRAC, Fonds Régional d'Art Contemporain, on 10,000 square meters. So it means to make several levels inside. And when we consider this, we imagine that the essential, what was essential? It is to keep the void, because the void was really the memory of the work memory of the space was here. The capacity also is here. And we think that it was absolutely impossible to make the program inside. So for that reason, we make another building exactly the same, touching it like a browser, in which the program could take place. And that could give the possibility to leave the other one, the former one, the existing one, totally free. So it means that it is no more about nostalgia or memory, it's also about ambition, or we can double. <coughs> double the space in order to provide more diversity, more kind of spaces, and in a better economy. It is much simpler to work outside this building than inside. So it's much more economic to make this building outside, touching it, than in making it inside. So it means that you can use it differently for art pieces, but also for different events. Look higher in the levels to the sea, to the harbor, or to the former building. Yeah, to make double, finally. Thank you.